My name is Ryan Earl. I am an amateur filmmaker and one of the founders of a filming team called Blue Steel Cinema. I've spent many years learning ways to create and build props and costumes for my films and for cosplay. Now, I will share these techniques with you. Using simple items you could find around your very own home, I will show you how you could design and make your very own props and costumes. This is Craftsmanship. Welcome back to Craftsmanship. It's been a while. We haven't been around for a little bit, but you know what? We are back and we are ready to get back into crafting. Now for the project that we're going to be taking on today, it's going to be a little different. We're upping our game a little bit. And by that I mean we're going to be using some materials that you wouldn't generally find around the house, but it is going to make for an awesome looking prop. So the project we're going to be taking on today is we're going to be building a sword. Now, the materials we're going to be using, I just want to warn everybody, we are going to be using actual real metal to make this project. For those who actually try to make this prop and follow this tutorial, I cannot stress how important it is that you are very careful with the tools that are going to be used to make this project, and if you do not have previous experience with them, that you please find somebody who has and make sure that you have supervision in order to make sure that you are safe while making this project. Swords date back to the founding civilizations of mankind, all the way to ancient Egypt, Greece, Mesopotamia, and more. To this day, they are still commonly used. But nowadays, Hollywood has taken the many perceptions and designs of swords and even shown us their very own ideas of these ancient weapons. For today's project though, we will be making the classic model of an English broadsword. Alrighty, so now let's get to crafting. First, take the 3 foot by 4 inch steel bar and measure out your handle for the sword. For my blade, I'm going to make it so that it can be used with either one hand or two hands. So my handle came out to about 6 and a half inches. It's time to make the tip. It's important to keep that the tip is symmetrical and both sides are even. Once you have those drawn out, it's time to cut. Always make sure that you are safe and wear heat resistant gloves for the sparks and wear eye protection and ear protection. Once you're set to go, start cutting. With metal grinders, it's important to cut slow and very carefully so as not to have loose metal shoot out at you. Also, be sure to always cut away from yourself. Once you've finished cutting the handle and the tip of your sword, make sure to quench the blade and cool the sword so you don't risk burning yourself. Now you'll move on to grinding. The grinding wheel is used to smooth out the edges and any rough cuts that you may have on the sword. It's important to wash and make sure that you get all the edges nice and smooth. Don't want any sharper, saw-like edges on the blade when you're finished. Now using a form of straight edge, it's time to trace a fuller on the blade. Using the grinding wheel, carefully go down the line that you draw, and be careful not to cut too deep into the blade, but just put in a simple groove. After you've got that finished, it's time to move on to grinding down the edges of the sword and making them round. When grinding down the edges, make sure to keep all the edges nice and round. You don't want any sharp spots or square pieces that could potentially cut someone when the sword is done. After the edges are finished, you're going to move to using a buffing wheel that's going to shine up the blade and get rid of any residue and keep that blade nice, clear, and shiny. Here's 
You're gonna take now the one inch wide steel bar and you're gonna measure out some pieces to go onto the handle. These need to be the length of the handle plus a little extra to give support to the blade. For mine, I made them an extra inch long so that the blade is nice and secure. After you've got those pieces cut, glue them nice and flush on the sword so that there's no uneven areas. Once they're all glued on, you're gonna take the aluminum wire and you're gonna begin wrapping around the whole handle of the blade. Make sure to place glue along the wire so that it stays on the handle and doesn't risk slipping off. After the wire is fully wrapped, then you're going to take crafting foam and cut long strips. You're going to use as many of these strips as you can in order to make sure you cover the whole handle of the sword. Wrap carefully and make sure that you only use a thin layer of glue so as not to have it squish out all over the handle. Now it's time to make the pommel for your sword. For my sword, I took the cardboard and I traced out several pieces that would be glued together in order to make a fully symmetrical pommel. Simple design is all needed, but if you want to make something a little more flashy, go ahead, it's your sword. Now it's time for the hilt guard. Once you have a design, using cardboard, cut out the guard. Make sure to at least double layer the cardboard to eliminate the risk of it tearing or bending. Once it's all cut out, you're going to glue it all together and place it on the sword. Make sure that all the edges line up before you finish gluing. After you've got the pommel and the hilt guard all attached to the sword, it's time for paint. For my sword, I went to go for a more royal sword look, so I went with a gold paint. You gotta make sure that when you do spray paint to give at least two or three hours for the paint to nicely settle before you actually try to take your sword. Once the paint is dry, your sword is complete. And there you have it. Once that paint dries, your sword is finally complete. Now I want to stress to all those who are trying to make this sword from the tutorial, please be very cautious with the tools that I have given you to make this project. They are dangerous and can cause serious harm if not used properly. But also, when you are finished, please remember that this is real metal and it is just a prop. This is not a toy and should never be used on another human being. So please be smart about what you are doing. Well, we are glad to be back. Craftsmanship is ready to get back to it. And we hope that you'll tune in for the next episode. See you next time.